What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back for another live Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle against a subscriber slash follower on Twitter. Today we are going up against Khan here in a PU battle and of course I'm bringing the same team as the last two battles. This will be the last time that this team gets to see some action. I'm really hoping that we can see Farfetch do something. That is what I've been hoping this entire time and it just hasn't happened and uh, overall, the team has been performed relatively well. Uh, for those of you that don't know what exactly we're bringing here, the Farfetch is going to be a uh, Swords Dance acrobatic set. Um, yeah, it hasn't worked out too well, but of course, I haven't really gotten much of a chance to use it. Then we have Physically Defensive Chorkle. That's going to be our Rapid Spinner and our Stealth Rocker. Then we have uh, Specially Defensive Ivysaur, which uh, will be rounding out the defensive core. Um, then we have a Ladian, which is going to be uh, dual screens. So that's something, I suppose. It also has U-turn um, and Encore. So it's a good support Pokemon. And it's actually decently fast, too. Base, I think, 85 speed is pretty decent, especially for PU. That's actually quite fast. Uh, then we have a Choice Scarf, Mr. Mime. And it is packing the Healing Wish. Um, so it should be able to give somebody a second chance if they get status or, you know, something bad happens like a crit or I don't know. Um, and then last but not least, we have what, uh, so far has been the MVP of this team, kind of surprisingly, uh, Fred the Floatzel, which is a max speed, max attack bulk upset, which at first, um, I was, I don't know, I was kind of surprised that it did anything. And going in, I was not really expecting it to do much so I guess it just has definitely gone past all expectations at least um, on my end but I guess I guess I should have seen it coming Fuzzle is a great Pokemon it's great in PU uh, all of its sets are good but anyway uh, here we go getting uh, the battle started here we have a lady in versus Bronzor do the float okay I think he's actually used this team against me before uh, a couple of sessions ago, the last time I did PU. Was that the last time? I don't know. Did I do a different tier? I don't even remember what I've done recently. That's how ridiculously bad my memory is. But uh, I'm expecting this to be Eevee Light. I'm assuming it's going to be his Stealth Rocker and that it's also probably packing screens, I'm assuming. Mono attacking Gyro Ball, maybe? That seems... Um, Somewhat reasonable, but anyway, I'm going to allow him to set up Stealth Rocks because I can't stop him anyway. So what I'm going to do is set up a Reflect, and now that he has set up the Stealth Rocks, I am free to Encore him into that so that he can not set up screens and so that um, he can't really do anything but switch. So I'm going to go for that instead of going straight for the Light Screen here. Um, I don't. I don't want to take any damage either. I don't want to have to take a gyro ball if I can help it. So we will encore him into that as he does stay in. And so he does try to set up Stealth Rocks for a second time. And it just doesn't work that way. So that doesn't really work in his favor. And now I'm free to either U-turn out if I wanted to. Or I can set up a light screen. I opted to set up the light screen um, as he is going to switch in his special attacking. Uh, well, I'm assuming it's a special attacking. I guess it could be physical, but... Um, what I'm assuming is going to be like a Calm Mind set here with this Duosion. I'm assuming. I am assuming. Now, I can just U-turn on this, get a little bit of chip damage. It'll be super effective. If it's Calm Mind, it'll probably be max physical defense. So U-turn from a Ladian with no attack investment is really not going to be doing much. Um, and the downside here, too, is that... The slow U-turn of Ladian is usually very helpful. I mean, base 85, and I am invested in speed, so I guess it's not really a slow U-turn. But uh, a lot of offensive Pokemon are faster than it. That's what I was going for. But this thing is so painfully slow that, um, yeah, that's not going to work in our favor. So we're going to have to absorb a hit or predict that he's going to go for Calm Mind. Now, the only thing I think he can one-shot on my team at this point is Ivysaur, and I'm especially defensive, so he would have to have Psy Shock, um, I'm assuming, especially with the fact that I have screens up. Actually, he might not be able to KO anything, to be completely honest, but uh, I'm going to go into Torkoal here, because I want to get rid of these Stealth Rocks. This is definitely a problem for Farfetch'd, and I don't really need Torkoal for too much on his team, so he is going to go for Psychic here, and that does not do too much thanks to that light screen, and I do have Protect, so I can 
uh, take advantage of that if I want to, but it's also just wasting my screen, so I don't really know how much that's helping me. Um, first and foremost, I want to get that rapid spin off, so if he's going to call mine, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I would rather uh, sacrifice our monitor two and get rid of these stealth rocks and uh, possibly even set up my own stealth rocks, which would be very helpful. So uh, we're going to go for the rapid spin this time. Like I said, he does go for the calm mind, so he's at plus one special attack, plus one special defense. That's kind of dangerous because Duosion is not a threat that you want to sleep on. So I'm going to debate here whether or not I want to switch out. He really has no reason not to just go for Calm Mind again. I can't do much to him. He still has his Eviolite intact. Um, I'm going to predict him to go for Calm Mind here. And I still have those screens up. So I am going to go into Farfetch'd. And if, if Farrah is going to go down to this thing, we're at least going to get rid of that Eviolite. As he actually does opt to attack this time and goes for Psychic. And at plus one with the light screen intact, still it does like 60% or something ridiculous. Um, so I'm not going to get to do anything, but I am going to do one thing, which I guess that really does just contradict itself. I'm not going to do anything, but I'm going to do one thing, so I really am doing something. I never make sense anyway, so yeah. But we do get to get rid of its Eevee Light, and that is perfect because uh, although we did have to lose our Farfetch, now this thing is going to go down a lot easier. And uh, how do I want to do that? That is the question. That is the question. Ivysaur, I don't think, is going to be killing this thing. Um, Fred might be able to live a hit. Possibly. Probably can. I mean, I am max HP. Floatzel is not the bulkiest Pokemon around, but I should be able to survive one hit and get off a of bulk up here. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. He, he's going to have to get like a super ultra mega crit, and if he does, I will probably just break down and cry right here, and I'll be very, very sad. I will be so sad, and so will Fred. He'll be crying. He will be crying, and nobody wants to see that. It's not a pretty picture. It is not a pretty picture at all. So we're going to set up that bulk up, like I said. And I'm assuming he's just going to attack me with a Psychic here. Or Energy Ball, maybe? No, he has Trick Room. Okay, so he has Calm Mind, Trick Room, Psychic, and I'm assuming Recover. Most of these things do carry Recover. So our Reflect is going to wear off. That means we have uh, two more turns of the Light Screen because I did use Encore in between there when Ladian was last out on the field. So this is kind of bad for me because Floatzel outspeeds everything on his team. And now it's not going to be outspeeding things. I could try to substitute, but I don't know how much damage he's going to be able to do to me here with the Psychic. Um, so I'm just going to Waterfall. I'm going to kill him. This thing is so annoying. This is terribly, terribly annoying. As he does go for Psychic, that doesn't quite do half. And we are going to get some Lefties recovery. I'm expecting this thing to go down without that EV Light, even if it is physically defensive. Plus one Floatzel is nothing to... You know, underestimate. It is one powerful, powerful Pokemon. And if he can't take me down here soon, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Because as soon as that Trick Room runs out, he, yeah, he's going to have a hard time breaking through Fred. He's definitely going to have a hard time. Because he's going to have to take plus one or a possibly even worse than that. You know, plus two, plus three waterfalls. And that's that's really difficult. And then, of course, you're you're messing with the uh, the critical hit chance. Not critical hit chance. Uh, there's always a critical hit chance, but I meant to say flinch chance. It just it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so how many turns of Trick Room have I burned so far? I have... He used Trick Room, and then I killed him the following turn. Right, so that's only two. So he's got three more turns to play with. Right? Right? Left? Diagonal? He's taking a long time to think about his move here. Um, granted, it, it's a very important one, as he is going to opt to go into the Bronzor again. So I'm assuming he's going to want to try to set up those Stealth Rocks again. But that's not really going to matter if I can just... Because I can just set up all over this thing. Um, I have Taunt, too. So if I, if I can predict him to go for Stealth Rock here, I can Taunt him so that he can't screen, he can't set up screens. Um, or I can just step up on this, too. What's he going to do? Gyro Ball me? That's not going to do anything. Um, it's a resistant hit, and actually my Reflect wore off, so it might do a little bit more, because the speed discrepancy is kind of a lot here. Bronzer, I don't think, has a lot of attack, though. So he's just going to take this opportunity to set up a Reflect here, which is fine by me, because I'm going to get a free sub-up. We're going to get some free lefties, 
uh, this turn and the following turn because obviously he's not going to be able to hit through a sub with a Bronzor that I know of. Um, our light screen is going to wear off. That really doesn't matter. I'm expecting this thing's attacking move choice to be Gyroball, as I mentioned already, or maybe even Explosion, but probably not because he probably has Eevee Light. Eevee Light and Explosion don't really make a whole lot of sense together, but that is just me saying random things. But since we were behind a sub and he has a reflect up for at least five turns, there's really no reason for me to not just set up bulk ups at this point. Um, so he's going to go out into his Lickitung, shiny Lickitung. That's interesting. That is interesting. And that's unfortunate because I actually didn't click bulk up there. I, I should have clicked bulk up there. But unfortunately, I clicked taunt because I didn't want him to set up stealth rocks and more screens and shenanigans like that. I know he was going to go first, but, you know. Oh well, so that's just a wasted turn because it just so happens that he goes into Lickitung, which has the Oblivious and is immune to Taunt, and that just that just stinks. But I'm still behind a sub. I get another turn of Lefty's Recovery. This is not bad for me at all. This is putting Fred in a fantastic position. Or any free turn, I mean, even though I didn't accomplish anything last turn, you know, the extra recovery does go a long way. Um, it might allow me to set up a another sub later on if I need to. And, you know, possibly get some more boosts. This Lickitung could be a problem to break through. I don't know if it's physically or especially defensive. Uh, return. Is that going to break my sub? No, it is not. And I get off another bulk up. So I'm going to be at plus two attack, plus two defense. And I know even at plus one that a return is not going to be able to break this sub. So this is fantastic for me. This is absolutely fantastic for me. I don't think this thing can do anything. Um, he may be, he may be trying to break my sub so that he can either inflict me with the status, like maybe Thunder Wave? Does this get Thunder Wave? I think it does. He might be trying to like T-Wave me, maybe trying to Toxic me to wear me down a little bit. Uh, possibly something like Dragon Tail to uh, phase me out and get rid of those boosts. But, um, with Bulk Up and me being so much faster, there's no reason for me to worry about that at all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to Waterfall and kind of just do a damage gauge to see how much that does. That did absolutely nothing, and we get the flinch. So again, that's another just a free turn of recovery for me. Of course, that was just by luck. Um, that's cool because he does still have Reflect Up. I forgot about that. So I'm just going to set up another bulk up here. There's really no reason for me not to. There's, there's nothing stopping me unless Lickitung gets Roar. And if it does... Uh, I am not aware of it because I've never seen any Lickitung ever run Roar or Licky Licky for that matter. I have seen them run Dragon Tail. It's somewhat common. And I'm assuming that this is going to be some kind of defensive Lickitung. I just don't know what side its defenses are on because hard to tell. Uh, Lickitung is pretty decently bulky on both sides, to be honest, with Eevee Light. It's, uh, it's pretty fat. It is pretty, pretty fat. But uh, I'm going to go right for the sub again here. I don't want to risk getting status. I don't want to risk getting phased as he does show off the Dragon Tail here. So he was indeed trying to phase me out, hoping that I would either go for Waterfall or try to bulk up again. And I'm glad that I didn't fall into that little trap because that would have set me back a bit. But at this point, it's looking like I might be able to get a full sweep uh, if we can get rid of this Lickitung. This and the Bronzor are the two fat things that I'm worried about. Once we get rid of that, I don't see anything else on his team being too much of a problem. Now, it's still early. It's only about 12 minutes into the match. Uh, it's kind of hard to think about setting up a sweep at this point. But uh, if we can go for it, I'm going to go for it. And if not that, I want to at least try to poke a bit of a hole into his team so that uh, somebody else can clean up. So he's actually going to pull a switch here, which I was not expecting, as he's going to go into his Bronzor, and that does over half. Which is great, because this is one Pokemon that I didn't want to get an attack off, because I didn't want it setting up another Reflect. And from the looks of things, it's looking like he's not going to be able to do that, as another Waterfall is going to take him out. So, Bronzor is going down. Goodbye, Shiny. Do the float. So, I just have to worry about that Lickitung at this point. I'm pretty sure there's nothing else on his team that can stand up to Fred here. So, Fred putting in some serious, serious work. This is what I'm saying. He's like, I don't know. I, all my attention was on Farfetch because I was like, oh, look at me. I'm using an underused bird. Ha, ha, ha. I'm so cool. And Fred's like, uh, wait a minute, buddy. 
you're not cool. I'm the best one on this team, and I'm going to prove it to you. And he's put in a lot of work in all three matches that I've used him so far, so I apologize for doubting you, Fred. That is entirely my bad. As Baby Sino, which is a fantastic name for a Natu, uh, that's a reference to my Zatu, which is nicknamed Sino, unless that's a reference to somebody else who nicknamed their Zatu Sino, which I guess is possible. But anyway, it's not going to take a waterfall at, what am I at, plus three, plus four? I don't know. I'm at a ridiculous amount of boost at this point. Uh, Natu goes down. I kind of figured he was going to go back into his Lickitung there, but he did not. And he's going to go into Bee Hugger. Oh, yes, the Bee Hugger, the Vespaquen. This can probably take a hit. This can probably take a hit because it does have very decent defenses. I always forget about Vespaquen. I have one. I just never use it. Um, I just, the typing, the fact that it's, you know, it's more efficiently used as a more defensive Pokemon because of its stats and moves and everything. But then, on the other hand, uh, it's weaknesses. I just, I don't like the typing. I really don't. So we're going to actually absorb that attack. So this is perfect. Um, I don't know if this thing gets any facing moves. I feel like it could get something like Whirlwind. But I mean, look at those wings. Those little tiny bee wings. Is that really going to be creating a giant gust of wind to blow somebody away? That's debatable. That is definitely debatable. I don't think it would get Roar because why do why would Game Freak make bees roar? I mean, Game Freak does a lot of weird things, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, uh, what I'm saying is I don't think it gets a phasing move, and um, yeah, it, if it had one, it didn't go for it there. So we finished it off with another waterfall, and now we have Smoky Drunk, the shiny Spinda, coming out onto the field. And Spinda does not have good stats at all. I think it's base 60 across the board, if I'm remembering correctly. It's going to hit me up with a Sucker Punch here and get a critical hit. Oh, no. Oh, no. There goes our sub. And Life Orb. Nice. Life Orb Spinda. I have to give you credit for that one, my friend. I definitely have to give you credit for that one. Unfortunately, Spinda is not going to be able to survive a hit from Fred there. More lefties recovery for us. We're getting so close to full health. In another turn or two, Fred will be all the way back up at full health just because of leftovers, which is ridiculous. Now, out comes the Lickitung. Is this his last Pokemon? Uh, it is his last Pokemon. Wow, Fred has demolished this team just with Waterfall. I mean, that's his only attacking moves. It's not like he's going to demolish a team with substitute or something but uh still that doesn't do anywhere near enough and we are going to get hit with a dragon tail here so uh fred is not going to complete the sweep but we are going to get um francois some action who again has well i don't think i've said this so i don't know why why i said again but uh francois has put in a decent amount of work in every battle as well that healing wish in the last one did prove to uh, affect the match there at the end so he's going to go for the knockoff here and get rid of my choice scarf. I would outspeed this thing anyway. Uh, this just means that I can change my moves and I will fire off a dazzling gleam, which should take out the Lickitung, and it does. So that is going to be the battle. Bit of a short one, less than 20 minutes it looks like. Uh, about 17 minutes or so as far as actual battle time. So we're going to wrap up using this team here. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next time. I may even do some more PU because I'm really enjoying the tier right now and just experimenting with a lot of random Pokemon, uh, which is something you can't really do as much in the higher tiers. So it's just something that's uh, it's personal preference, just something I'm enjoying right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or comment or whatever you would like to do, of course. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.